<laughs> Welcome back, guys, to Kick Like a Girl episode 12. We're doing our first online episode today, and we have a very special guest all the way from Sweden. Welcome, Charlie Grant. Thanks, Tilly. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited. <laughs> yes, no problem. So good to see you. Um, let's talk about, you're obviously an Adelaide girl, for those that don't know. Um, tell us, so you grew up in Adelaide with your mum, Jody, your dad, Andrew, and brother, Jacob. How was that growing up? So tell us. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm Adelaide down south, so which didn't help for training because I always out north, so lots of driving. <laughs> Um, yeah. But yeah, so I would always, I mean, we're a very sporting orientated family. Um, dad loves watching the footy and the cricket um, and same with mum and not so much. Mum and I don't like the cricket as much, but um, <laughs> never really, they were never really soccer people, but it was at my school, Emmaus um, Catholic Primary School. That was the like, main sport offered at our school. So um, my brother joined as soon as he started and then, I would always follow whatever my brother would be doing. So I jumped on board with the soccer as well. And then, yeah, I've just loved it ever since. Um, and, yeah, just kept playing. And um, I also was playing netball as well when I was younger. Um, but I had to stop that quite early to pursue um, my soccer. So that was hard to make a decision so early on. Uh, I think I was like, I think it was in like, when I was in year three or something. So, like, I had to choose wow. um, between, yeah, because yeah. it was just now clashing with, time, like, the days of trainings. And, um, yeah, so that were the main two sports I played. And then um, and then I also went to Woolcroft College um, after, uh, in year six, I moved there. And then, yeah, so that's probably um, my childhood mainly, but um, lots of sport, lots of school and, yeah. Yeah, nice. I was going to say Emmaus Christian College. I actually haven't heard of that. South Plimpton, is that right? Um, what's that? Was Just that down south? south. Uh, no, it's um, it's like it's actually Woodcroft in Woodcroft. Um, oh, okay. So, yeah, uh, next to Woodcroft Primary School. Um, we'd always like we're right next door to Woodcroft Primary School, so we'd all see some friends over there as well. Sometimes it'd be like, um, like there was like a fence across, so it'd always be talking to the other kids over there <laughs> yeah right um what were you like at school because I studying teaching I can just imagine you being like the best little student ever like little pigtails like, at the front never talking am I right <laughs> <laughs> you know it's funny you say pigtails because I think I've got a photo of when I was like really young with you know the school photos with the pigtails um, oh. <laughs> I grew out of that literally <laughs> um no I was very really- dedicated to school um always want to get my homework done on time always working hard yeah. um never really in trouble um <laughs> sticking to the rules um yeah so um I think if I ever got in trouble I'd cry that's for sure yeah because <laughs> uh, I yeah never wanted to put a foot wrong but um yeah always um trying to do the right thing and getting my um work done on time yeah so I was pretty much right then school <laughs> um let's talk about football so you played a little bit at school um and started at Cumberland age nine roughly yeah um and then six years in the NTC program what was that like yeah in the NTC you obviously met a lot of your friends that you still sort of talk to now from there so yeah tell us about that time yeah, I think it's so special in football how you can just stay so close to so many people you've grown up playing with. Like, um, yeah, I've got so many friends from that um, program. We haven't been in, in it for now three or four years. So it's really special to um, still have those friends. But, yeah, I joined the, the state program when I was oh, about t- oh, 10 or 11. Um, and, yeah, it was... Um, it's, it's crazy looking back at it. I was just talking about it with my parents, how it all feels like such a blur looking back at the um, at the years. But, um, yeah, I was fortunate enough to be part of that and it really, I think, set up my um, the way I go about um, playing and who I am as a person today. Like um, 
having Sharon, she really like um, Sharon Black, she really instilled that discipline and respect for um, your coaches, your players around you and um, getting to training on time but then also having to do your homework to be able to um, hand that up into school as well. But um, And then Jono, he would always um, give us little like uh, skills to do, which um, at the time probably seemed a bit like like funny, but then it was also um, gave us that discipline to um, like complete those skills, send in videos to show that we've done it. And that's just like helped me with working on those one percenters and outside of training. And um, and then Michael in under 17s going into, especially that was about the time when we went into MPL and State League and um, being exposed to higher level play and um, yeah, a lot more physical, especially for us, like we were quite small then as well. So yeah. <laughs> that was a real challenge. But um, uh, yeah, just the belief in ourselves and to believe in that. But um, yeah, it was um, uh, yeah amazing experience and made a lot of friends through that as well, who I'm still friends with today. But um, it's a great program, and um, I've had a lot of great coaches throughout that as well. Yeah, nice. Um. The future Matildas program, because I didn't know this was really a thing. So you did you live in Sydney and play yeah. like Town Spartans? Is that who you play for? Yeah. So the future Matildas program, I moved there after my year in um, my last year in under 17s, like NTC. Yeah. And so I had to actually do my year, my last year of school in Sydney online through a Canberra school because um, New South Wales start like they start year 12 at the end of um, at the end of their year 11 so I would have been like a whole term behind so Canberra had a good really good setup to do online so I moved to Sydney with a home uh, stay family they were, they're a lovely lovely family uh, I don't know how they they had me and Carly Ross back I don't know how they put up with us because <laughs> we were very rowdy looking back at that <laughs> Uh, but that's also really special because we didn't really know each other going into that and as soon as we were put together in that host family we just clicked and like we've been best friends ever since so that's really special but yes I was there um and it was just the first year we didn't play with like a club it was just full-on training we'd play against some boys every now and then and um but it was like a full-time program and um luckily the uh where we trained that was just around the corner so it was really easy to get to um and didn't have to drive through all those crazy roads of Sydney so that was nice <laughs> uh and yeah and then the second year was when they were like I think it would be good for us to get that game time as well um and play uh some uh, MPO as well as doing the training and yeah that's when I joined Blacktown Spartans um and yeah they were a really lovely club I really enjoyed my time there it was nice to play in another league as well to um uh, be exposed to something different um but yeah I had a had a lot of fun there and I think uh, Kyra was in my team that year as well so that was good but I only played about six games I think it was and then I actually hurt my hamstring so it put me out for the rest of the season but it was nice to be a part of like a team environment again that winning feeling and yeah, so that was that was good. Yeah, love that. So is that kind of when, at what point in your life did you think, this is what I want to do, this is kind of, I want to play for Matildas, I want to be a professional? Yeah, I think, honestly, I think that was actually really early on in my career. As soon as I knew, I was like, ever since I was young, I've always had this uh, competitiveness in me and winning spirit but I think when I was quite young and knew that you could play for your country so maybe around nine or ten when I was going into the state programs and I knew that you could take this seriously I, that's all I, I've ever wanted to do and I've always set my like, goals on being a Matilda so um, uh, yeah and I've just worked um, worked towards that ever since. Yeah it's really cool. Um, NDC, you won the Shirley Brown Player of the Year Award. Uh, only 17. That was in 2018. What was that like? <laughs> yeah, I, that was um, really unexpected. I, I was 
but I remember going to that awards night, not really expecting anything. I knew people from teams get invited and that you just, um, uh, like I thought it was really fun just being part of the night. And then, uh, um, yeah, early on in the night, I won the rising star and I thought, oh, that's like re uh, really nice to get that recognition and um, really special. And, and then, then after that, I had to do like a, I've never done an interviews on stage or anything. And then they brought me up for an interview. I thought this is uh, like overwhelming. And then I saw on the, the board, the, um, the votes and I was on the top and I got the shock of my life and I got so nervous then. So I don't know what I said up there. Jared Walsh probably remembers how nervous I was when I was doing that <laughs> interview. But, um, it, yeah, when I did win that award, it was just, um, yeah, I, I was speechless really. It was, um, to, and especially being around so many, there's so many great players in that league, so many well-established players and, um, but I think it just, uh, I think it was more of a representation of how well our team did. I think we we're all just having fun and, um, we we're all playing really well together. And, um, Michael and McCare had a lot of trust in all of us girls. So, um, yeah, it was an honor to receive that award. And, um, but, uh, it was also, yeah, more of a representation of our team, I think. Yeah. Um, that then just shortly after then. You sign for Adelaide United, your first contract for two years under Ivan. Um, yeah, so obviously you knew a lot of the girls already, probably in the NTC and playing against them and stuff. So what was that like to kind of play for your hometown and, yeah, sign your first pro contract? Yeah, that was, um, yeah, dream come true. It was every, everything I've always been working towards to play for LH and Idol. I used to always go and watch their games and cheer them on, wait for signatures after the game. So to mm -hmm. then finally be part of the team was really special. And, um, uh, and yeah, to represent your home state is um, uh, an honour. And, um, yeah, I love the club still today and they've done so much for me. So, um, yeah, I'm really grateful for Ivan and Stents having that trust in me. And, um, yeah, it was... Uh, I had some great years there. Yeah, so you had your first year. Did you bench quite a bit? Did you play um, a little yeah, bit? Yeah, so I then think then I was... You were more of a dominant sort of starter, which then led you to you know, your future Yeah, so I think the world. first year I was coming off the bench. I think I was coming off as and then coming on as like a winger or something, which was kind of fun, something different. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, the second year was a bit more... A bit more of a mix. I think I um, was getting more starts in in that one, and then yeah, that final year was when I um, felt like I'd really cemented that spot in the starting lineup as a fullback, which was yeah nice. Yeah. So obviously, as my all my guests, I do um, a bit of research, and you were very easy because you have a lot of articles, a lot of interviews, <laughs> and stuff. I was like, this is making my job so much easy, it's easier. <laughs> um, but I found something really cool. So in 2020, you had a quote and it said, in the future, I really want to play for the Matildas. That would just be a dream come true. If I could play in the World Cup on home soil in 2023, that would be so amazing. And I'd also eventually like to play overseas somewhere in Europe. Where are you now, Charlie? In Sweden. Sweden. <laughs> that gives me goosebumps looking at that. Oh, no, it's seriously so cool. So not even three years later. You've obviously debuted for the Matildas. You're a part of that. I'm preparing for a World Cup. So let's talk about the World Cup. How must that feel being so close? What is it? Eight, ten weeks-ish. How important is that in the preparation and obviously having it on home soil in Australia? Yeah, uh, it's – I can't believe how close it is. It's crazy to think mm -hmm. that it's just right around the corner. Um, it – it's full of emotions, like nerves of um, just, well, wanting to make that, that team. and But then also if you do, you're just trying to, like, want to put your absolute best forward for the team and um, go in there with uh, the best preparation. Now you've done everything so you can give the best to the team and give the best to the country. and um, But then also so much excitement. I think we've been playing really well and um, getting some really good results. So it's... 
I feel like um, we're going in with some really great preparation and um, a lot of belief within the team. So I think it's really exciting to see what we can do and on home soil. And it's just so amazing to see how many people are getting around the country. And um, like when you just see like little posts or something about the World Cup or even a message from like a friend that I've went to school with or who I haven't spoken to for a while asking about the World Cup and just hearing about that is just um, so nice and so special. But um that it's going to be huge for the country and um, it's going to be, yeah, game-changing. So it's really mm-hmm. exciting. Yeah. So when I often think about this as well because obviously players from like anywhere in Australia would look up to the Matildas. So obviously they've got gotten a lot popular probably the past couple of years. Um, and you looked up, I think there was another quote from you, um, about Ellie Carpenter and the way she plays, um, to then get invited to camps and final, finally you're kind of in this sort of environment where you're, you know, training with all these sort of players. What was that like? Were you kind of just like a little bit fangirly or were you just like trying to play it cool, like, no, I'm here now, I'm, I'm kind of one of you as well? How does, how does that yeah. go? Yeah, <laughs> it's hard to – when I remember that first camp and – um, I knew a couple of the girls, but like not like all the Sams, the Ellies, and Steph and Kate. And I remember when they all came in, they, very, they all came at a similar time, all at the um, dining like room, and they came over introducing themselves, and they're all saying their names. And I was like, "Yeah, I know who you all are." <laughs> um, but yeah, okay. but it was kind of nice also to show like that they're just regular Still people as well, and yeah. um, like makes you feel. Um, part of the team and um but yeah I you do try and play it cool and um not get too overwhelmed by that and just um have to remind yourself that you're part of the team and that um you belong here and um but yeah you do I do have moments still where I'm like wow that's the best player in the world right there or (laughs) that's yeah yeah. I looked up to these girls but um no it is special being part of that team 20 so kind of happened pretty quickly for you um 2020 and then you kind of found yourself selected for the squad for the Tokyo Olympics um yeah what was that kind of like going to such a you know massive event that's like a lot of people's bucket list or dreams to kind of just go to one of them events even though I, you didn't get your debut there no, though, did you? I no. didn't play, yeah I hadn't played but to be part of that team was yeah. and there was um I yeah still can't believe that that all happened and yeah like you said it happened so quickly but um just to see all the preparation that we're doing in um training and all that and pay off in the games was really special but we were lucky enough to be in the village for um a couple of days and just seeing all the different athletes and like uh, there was one day I saw uh, Paddy Mills and um, Ash Barty, uh, a couple of the swimmers, and they they just um, they'd have some chats as well, and um, they were just so. Uh, I think I spoke to Emma. I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name, McKean, but yeah. she like won all these medals, and she was just so down down to earth and so lovely, and yeah. it was so um, refreshing to to see and hear, and but also so inspiring to. Um, be amongst all those athletes that they've all had to do so much um, to get to where they are. Um, but, yeah, that's that was uh, definitely up there with one of my um, favourite moments and um, something I'll hold, uh, yeah, close forever because, um, yeah, Olympics is at the top of any sport and um, it was a huge honour to be part of that squad. Do you remember getting, like, was it like a call? Was it one day after camp or whatever? What do you remember when you first yeah. found out you're going to Rio? So we they were actually in the girls that were available like off season were in a camp at that time. So but I was in our Sweden season was still going. So I was actually in Sweden in my apartment. I think we had a scheduled I knew we were all getting scheduled a call or an individual meeting and um, so I knew um, that that decision was going to be made and it was with Tony and Mel from memory and they had like a little PowerPoint up and they were just 
It was. It felt like one of those, like you know, the fun finale of like Bachelor, where it's like they say all these things, and you're like, "Is it a butt coming? Is it yeah. like, <laughs> is it gonna be?" And then, yeah. yeah, and then they um, flicked over the slide and said how it was like the an extended player, and um, of yeah, I was speechless. I did it. I was so grateful for him trusting me to be part of that team, and. Um, yeah, and I remember getting off the call and just calling my parents straight away with pure excitement and joy and, um, so, yeah, I couldn't believe it. That's the best. Um, so later you did debut um, September 2021 in Dublin. Um, that Was that the to qualify for the World Cup? But it didn't matter because you guys were already... Like we're already oh, no, that was just a normal friendly. That one, yeah, just a friendly, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then you've you went to the Asian Cup in twenty two, so not long after, and that's when. So we must, yeah, must have already known that Australia were going to host it at that yeah. point. So yeah. you guys didn't really have to actually qualify, but you were playing against teams that had to. Um, mm-hmm. South Korea. Did you guys lose? Yes, that was. Korea. Yeah, but China ended yeah. up winning. I think, yeah, I think you might be right. Uh, yeah, I just remember that was a quarterfinal or that was, yeah, just we are all just so shocked and disappointed um, from yeah. coming out of that because uh, I think we went in with a lot of confidence and belief and, um, but, you know, maybe that's what we needed and that's a um, mm. good learning experience and just gives us more fire to perform better. But, um, yeah, it was um, disappointing that, that game. But uh, luckily we're still part of the World Cup and hosting, so hopefully yeah. we can, yeah, put out the performances then. I want to ask as well, playing at, playing at an international level, so obviously you're playing teams all over the world, do you find a difference between you know, your Asian countries, your South Koreas, your Chinas, Japan versus, say, Brazil or even America, like the different continents around yeah. the world? Do you There's definitely, play? yeah, lots of differences. I think um, the Asian uh, countries are a little bit more compact and um, almost more patient also in their build-up. Like they, um, they just seem so like nonchalant with the ball and just um, relaxed and um but then uh yeah then the Americans are a bit more fast attacking almost a bit like us in a way um but uh going forward quickly and um that higher pressure teams and then you have the Brazilians that are yeah more skillful on the ball and um a bit uh yeah, unpredictable in that sense. And then, yeah, but there's it's so exciting to play against so many different styles of play. But, um, yeah, we definitely have a lot of meetings going into different teams about all the different style of plays, the key players, um, and how we're going to go about defence, attack and everything. So, um, no, it's, uh, yeah, it is exciting playing different, um, different styles of play. Yeah, well, it's going to be super exciting, obviously, the World Cup. So it'll be... Hopefully see you on the big screen. Um, I want to last thing about the Matildas, the Disney Plus documentary that just came out, um, if you guys haven't seen on Disney Plus, obviously. Um, I watched a little bit of it. I found I think episode four was a little bit of you. Um, yeah, how was that sort of just, you know, like or even just seeing yourself on Disney Plus and Having, even having a program devoted just to the women is, is pretty cool. Yeah, I think um, it's weird when we're watching it. Uh, I was watching it with uh, Katrina Gorey and um, some friends and it, it's just so weird seeing us on this, like, Disney Plus. Like, it was, it's crazy to um, see that we're on one of the highest platforms in um, uh, TV. Um, but yeah, uh, it was it was really nice that we got the opportunity to share our story, and I think it's really exciting going into the World Cup to um, show those little behind the scenes to get the um, crowd excited about um, what to expect and also get to know the players a little bit more. But um, the filming process was uh, at the start; it was so hard to even after we finished, it was so hard to know what was going to be pieced together because there was so much filming that's gone 
on. There was even bits obviously not put in, but um, uh, they did an amazing job piecing that all together. I definitely cried a lot during watching it, especially <laughs> with Minnie and Harper. That was very emotional. But, um, uh, yeah, and then... Um, but you kind of get used to the cameras around and um, and the, all the staff were like the crew in it were really lovely and um, made the interview so easy and comfortable so you just felt like you're having a normal conversation when you're doing that but um, yeah I'm really glad we got to share our story I think that like they showed there's so many great stories from um, every individual and everyone's come from different places to get to where they are and um, no, I was, they did it really well. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, let's talk about Sweden. So obviously you said playing in Europe was a goal from early on. How did that sort of come about? Was it, um, you know, kind of seeing you played for Adelaide United, you had a great year with them. Was it obviously you're in the Matildas camp? When does that kind of, when does it kind of, you know, tick over that you're kind of getting looked at for a Europe? European yeah. team? Well, it all happened really quickly, actually. So the LA United season had just finished and I was really at a stage where I was like, oh, I'm not sure what I want to do. I, I had my headset on, I think, going back to future Matildas and, like, in the um, in Sydney will be really good. Um, like, it's reliable and a safe place and, like, comfortable. But then I, after, not long after... The season had finished. I think it was I uh, got a call from Mel and Jada, and she was saying like, "Oh, club in Sweden's interested in you. Like, just be ready for um, a call or a message from them." And and I was like, "Wow, okay, yeah, I'll um, awesome." And then I, not long after, I get a message from uh, the technical director or the manager um, from FC Rosengard. And I, I didn't really know much about Sweden at the stage. Dylan Holmes had just gone over, so I knew her team and I knew it was a good league. Um, and then I looked into it and I saw there's, like, Caroline Sager, who's, like, captain of the Swedish national team, and then all these other players that play for their national team. And I was like, wow. I was like, this is a big club. I was like, I, I, like, I thought, uh, and the transfer window was closing within a couple of days of, when they had messaged me so I was like oh, quick I guess I just gotta go what have I got to lose like yeah. I'll be around great players if I if I don't play I'm gonna be in a great training environment I know Dylan's there so I can always reach out to her if I need anything and I just was like yeah why not <laughs> let's yeah. do it and I'm, I'm so glad I did because it's just helped me grow so much as a player and person yeah what's the biggest culture shock like language um, how cold it gets or yeah language is really good actually they all speak really good English in fact they love speaking English so I my Swedish is so bad because they don't let me speak it well they would let me but they just they're just good at English um but probably the weather uh especially around like when you get around to the end of the year or just recently it was like when I came back in like February March so cold so you need so many layers to get through um like now when the sun comes out and it's like 15 degrees I'm like on my balcony soaking up the sun <laughs> um I'm like this is summer uh but then also the way everyone gets around so when I was living in Mama for when I was playing for a Rosengard for about a year and a half I was um just riding my bike everywhere I would ride my bike to get everywhere it was you don't really I mean now I need a car to get to training um, but you could just get around by just walking or riding. And I think it was kind of really, it's quite refreshing actually to get on your bike and just go for a ride. Um, but, yeah, so they're probably the main two things. Yeah. What are the um, fans like over there? Was that something? Yeah. I mean, you guys won a title and there was like 2,500 people there. So it might not sound like much, but compared to maybe what you've used to before at a club level, um, yeah, and I've seen videos and yeah, stuff like bits and pieces are quite involved. Seems pretty cool. It varies between each club, but like mm. there's always I feel like each club always have like a pretty good fan base that have like some songs and like so it sounds like there's more people than they are like 
they're all chanting their team's name, or which is quite nice. I think I feel like you don't get that yeah, too I'm much in that. the yeah. Um, yeah. So then um, I love where I'm at now, Victoria. They have we have so many cute little fans. They're all it's such a small town where I play in, and all the like um, there's like mainly like old people get together and like cheer and stuff, which is really cute. Um, but then, um, but then Hammerby, where like Kyra's playing, they get they get huge amount of people to their games, and um, that is a women and men's club, so I think that might help. But um, it's really nice to see when like I love playing against Hammerby because Kyra's club, because then you know you're going to get a lot of fans, and yeah, yeah, it's just so much more exciting when you get more fans. But yeah, it's uh, you always get yeah a, a fair few, well, five hundred to a thousand to a game. Which is yes, nice, but it brings a bit more. Yeah. What does a normal sort of day look like for you? So do you guys train just once a day, twice a day in the mornings, or? Yeah. Um. So right now we usually train. We train in the afternoon usually. On the weekends we'll train in the morning. Um. And we usually get um. Sometimes we have gym like on a, a once a once or twice a week we'll have gym um, in the morning and then training in the afternoon. But um, we don't have gym. I usually just um, oh, my days vary. But in the morning I, that's when like you know family in Australia awake. So then I might give them a call or um, or if not I just um honestly I'm not studying at the moment so I'm trying to find things to do so right now my time involves either I've picked up some books to read so that's been getting me through um I'm sp- I spend a lot of time with like the girls on my team and um and then some where I used to live is only like an hour train ride away so sometimes I go there to see my friends there and um but yeah, they're the sort of main things I do. And then we go to training, which is about a 45-minute drive. So um, we, yeah, I'll go, I drive with um, Minnie, uh, Clara, and then Harper, Minnie's a little girl. So <laughs> um, that's our couple. And then, yeah, train and come back, cook dinner and off to bed. <laughs> yeah, speaking of Minnie and Harper, oh, like – I follow Katrina on Instagram, as I'm sure a lot of people do. Um, and, yeah, I just thought it was so, like, beautiful how she could, you know, have a child and still go back to professional sport, which in the Disney Plus we did see a lot of the insights of that. So you only live, like, 10 minutes or so from them. What's that like? I kind yeah. of feel like you've got a little door to yourself at times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they're yeah. like a – Second family to me, um, they are. Uh, they have me all over a lot for dinner and stuff, which is really nice. But um, no, they they've been really helpful for me transitioning over to this team. And um, you just see, I love having Harper around because whether it's at like in camp or here at Vitoire, it's like if you're having a bad day and she's there, she just cheers you up immediately. And it's um, no, it's there. A uh, special group of girls, and um, no, but Minnie has been amazing to do what she does. I don't think she realised how inspiring she is to have a kid. She was all on her own at the time as well, and to um, have a kid come back to play and um, and come back in such great form as well is incredible. And um, she, yeah, I just uh, love um, spending time with her and Harper, and um, they. Yeah, inspire me to um, be the best I can as well. Yeah, that's so cute. Um, earlier this year, you spent some time in Adelaide. Well, and the end of last year as well. How like special is it to go back to Adelaide and see those people that you probably go six-ish months without seeing? Um, yeah, for so long. Yeah, I love going back home. It's um, it's always so special, whether it's 10 days, couple months or whatever. It's um, so nice. Um, it's, yeah, especially like my family, like they're, they've made so many sacrifices for me to be where I am today. So to come back to them and um, just spend some real quality time with them is really nice. And then to also see my friends like who 
um, and see how well they're doing as well. Um, and then to like whether we've been speaking a lot during my time away or not, and then just coming back together and it's just we pick up right where we left off. It's really nice and um, it's really refreshing to just go back home and um, switch off for a little bit and, yeah, and then go back to football. Yeah. There's one moment I want to ask you about. It wasn't too long ago in April, the game against England where you guys won 2-0, where you scored your first goal. Oh, my gosh, everyone was so happy. Like, I swear it was, like, all over my feed, like, especially people from Adelaide, like, yes, Charlie, like, you've scored a goal. Talk us through that moment and and afterwards as well. Like, you know, I'm sure you got a lot of messages and, yeah, just a lot of support. Yeah, I still can't believe that one in the back of the day. I, sometimes it comes up on my feed still and I, I look at it and I go, wow, how did that go? <laughs> like, still can't believe that was me. <laughs> Yeah, but I uh, I remember in the game and just I just saw Sam get the ball and I was like, well, if I just run and get in the box, I know it's, she's going to have a perfect delivery. And then um, I just was like, I've got to put my head on this and hope for the best and <laughs> went in. So <laughs> um, that was really, yeah, it was a really, it was really special to get the win um, against England, but really good for our belief. But then to also score a goal and for like all, the girls are so happy for me, which was so such a nice feeling because it just feels so. I always feel part of the team, but you just feel really special. Like to like, I am part of this team. I am like um, in this team, and then and then the all the messages I got from people back home, people I've played with, um, even some friends from school or other people. It's just it was. Um, yeah, I'm really grateful for everyone's support and um, it really means a lot to have everyone's backing and, um, yeah, I play play for them and play for um, everyone that's helped me get to where I am today. So to have their support means so much to, so much to me and, um, yeah, it was definitely overwhelming um, getting, receiving all that response. But, um, mm-hmm. yeah, but yeah, I, I loved, um, well, yeah, it's just so grateful for everyone. Cool. All right. It's funny you said your Swedish is quite poor because I, I have something planned. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> You're like, oh God, why are you doing this to me? Um, I'm just going to say something like quite easy. I think you'll smash it. Yeah. And you just have to translate it. So I'm going to okay. say it in English and you're going to see. Just have a go. It's, it's better than what yeah. I could do. So how do you say good morning? Uh, good morning. Good. That's one, right? Yes, yeah, so I'm very similar to English. So I'd be embarrassed when you get that one. What about your welcome? Uh, Vashgo. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but yeah, that's. Crazy. It's funny because I've got it written here and I'm like, obviously, like, I know a little bit if it's right, but <laughs> like, I can't pronounce it either. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just say it with confidence, you'll be fine. Yeah, I'll say it with confidence. <laughs> what about how much does this cost? Oh, maybe uh, it could be who, uh, it could be who among a batala, no, or it says that's how much to pay. Uh, how, what does it say? <laughs> <laughs> now I've got to read it. <laughs> Market cost a def ha. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Huh? Okay. See, 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 I'm yeah. fluent in Swedish. You just yeah. Know. See, <laughs> you need to give me some lessons. <laughs> uh, two more. I am very hungry. Or well, I am hungry. Yeah, uh, hungry. Oh yeah, yes. hungry. <laughs> And my name is Charlie, and I'm a professional footballer. Yag uh, head to Charlie. Yag uh, a professional footballer. Basically, <laughs> it's it's done. It's done. It's over. Yeah. So to point Thank you. <laughs>
You did well, actually. <laughs> I've actually had Swedish lessons. That's the embarrassing thing. I did do Swedish lessons for a little bit and I then stopped them. Um, but I suppose if you're hanging good. out with, like, Katrina and yeah. Tegan, oh, Tegan's your housemate? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tegan yeah, lives in Mama, but, yeah, we're always hanging out together. But, yeah, <laughs> we don't like practice that Swedish English together. Anyway. Or if people... Yeah. No, you're Australian. They'll just speak English for you anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But they I did think really ask, we did put a question box up and turns out you've got a lot of people wanting to know some stuff. So we're just going <laughs> to quickly go through some questions and then we'll get into your dream team and then we will be finished. But, yeah, I've just tried to filter through some of them. So, st- and I thought some of them were quite good. So we'll see how we go. Yeah. Steven asks, "What's your favourite stadium to play at?" Oh, favourite stadium, definitely one in Australia. I would probably say, do love Combank Stadium in Sydney. Um, oh, yeah. Just really good atmosphere um, with all the crowd, and then um, good lighting at night when you walk out. It just feels really special and. I think that might have been my first game in Australia as well. So, but yeah, love Combank Stadium. But all the ones in Australia are really nice. Anyway, with the Australian crowd. Yeah, just back home. It's the best. Yeah. All right, Brianna wants to know: Do you have any advice for young girls to make it pro? Uh, the best advice I'd give is just um, yeah, always work hard, um, but then also never lose your enjoyment for the game. I think it's so important to enjoy playing and um but yeah uh keep working hard stay positive and yeah so three three ones positive hard work and enjoyment yes mushroom queen funny uh username wants to know your proudest matilda's moment oh i think i would have to say scoring against england i think um yeah I've that's definitely cool. there's just my debut was also up there and being part of that Olympic team, but scoring just was a really special moment. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Maya, favorite memory from Sweden, although you're still there, but favorite thing about Sweden. <laughs> favorite memory from Sweden. I think that would probably be winning the Swedish Cup final with Rosengard. Um we went into extra time against uh heck and our rivals and um and i was uh, that was one of the games i did play so um and it was just that feeling of winning in extra time it's just it doesn't beat no other i think like mm. you've worked so hard your legs are breaking but you got the win and it just feels yeah that was really a special moment nice okay amelia oh we did answer that she wants to know if you were always motivated to play at a high level, which we covered and you said was kind of always a goal. Little determined Charlie, got it done. (laughs) Um, Hayden, best friends met through football. Oh, Oh, there's so many. (laughs) I'm going to miss someone. Um, Yeah, Adelaide crew. Yeah. Builders crew. No, there's Adelaide. There's one in Sweden and Sydney. Um, uh, right, like in it's hard to choose. <laughs> they won, um, yeah, we'll say like 10, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, but right now, within where I am, like, like in my team would be like Minnie and Clara and stuff, but then also Tegan and then um, Carly from being overseas, but then in Adelaide, I could pick. 100 people so um <laughs> and then actually now that i've said names i have more names are popping to my name so we're just going to stick with none and everyone <laughs> i'm close with a lot of people <laughs> i don't want to get you in any trouble someone's probably yeah. listening like, oh, child, yeah. probably mellow like, <laughs> she would be in there yes, right. <laughs> um anoa favorite game day hairstyle <laughs> he wants me to say the braids I think um but I love now just I used to always do the braids growing up but now I just like the ponytail with um uh, straightening my hair just you know can't go wrong with a ponytail and yeah. hair straightening yeah. love that 
Uh, Isabella wants to know what you eat before a game. Oh, that depends on like the timing of the game, when and where. But if anyone knows me, it's always pasta somewhere, whether it's night before or like lunch. I have a pasta somewhere in between that. Got a carb up. Um, yeah, but then I also always have like a banana and like a muesli bar just before uh, the game. Yeah. yeah. Um, what is your favourite Swedish food? From Arsenal, WFC. I don't think that's the Arsenal actual team, but someone that likes Arsenal. Swedish, Swedish food. I do love the Swedish meatballs here. Um, I know that sounds very cliche, but they they actually are really nice. Um, and they do have some really good, like they call it fika, which is like a cake, like little um, pastries and stuff. So they've got some really nice cinnamon buns and stuff. But, yeah, they're probably the two favourite things stand up cool helen tilly thanks mum for the support um <laughs> mum wants to know do you have any pre-game rituals oh pre-game rituals yeah that's one i try and i try and be careful with because i then can start it starts to make you really nervous yeah. if you <laughs> mess it up but I always listen to, there's two songs I've always listened to, which I've noticed if I don't, I feel too nervous not to. So I listen to Better When I'm Dancing by Megan Trainer, and um, mm-hmm. this other one called 10,000 Hours. I'm not sure who it's from actually. But I listen to those two songs and then uh, actually I usually, it's come recently, I always have gummy bears with me. Um, because it's just a little bit of hit of sugar, so that's probably the main, the main ones that I feel uncomfortable if I don't have with me. Um, <laughs> but, Love yeah. that. Yeah. Um, D wants to know biggest inspiration or idol. Uh, biggest inspiration or idol. Um, to in oh, I've had a few growing up. Like I think. Um, like we mentioned before, like Ellie and Steph were definitely two players I looked up to. Um, then the the surfer Sally Fitzgibbons, just the way she goes about her lifestyle and get to where she is. But I think like who I've always looked up to growing up and another cliche sort of thing, but um, my parents and then my um, grandma as well, they're just um, uh, like, put their best in everything they do and um, the sacrifices my mum and dad have had to make to get to where I am and the hard work they've put in for um, both my brother and I to be, um, to achieve everything we want to is, uh, yeah, really special. So definitely them. And then my grandma's just been through so much and she, um, probably the kindest person I know. So, um, yeah, definitely have to say that. Katrina Gorey wants to know who your favourite little person is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, probably um, Katrina Gorey. <laughs> oh, <what is? laughs> no, uh, Harper Gorey. Can't go past Harper Gorey. She's Harper Gorey. So <laughs> oh, she's so beautiful. Um, <laughs> Emily wants to know who your best coach is over the years. Another question where I thought, Hmm. Will she say some names or will it be? That's a tough one. Um, yeah. Well, I don't think I can choose. Kind of gave you <laughs> the opportunity or like kind of like a pivotal moment in your career that you thought, I have owe it to that I coach. Mean, what do you feel? Definitely Tony people? Gustafsson has done like a lot for me. Like he's definitely instilled a lot of belief in me. But um and it's then you have like sweet. Gary Van Engman and yeah, he's really good. And then you have Gary Van Engman and Leah Blaney that's gave me that opportunity in Young Matildas. And then I had, uh, so then the list goes on. Cause then I had Michael and McCare who I, I think actually they, those two, and I'll probably talk about them later in the, um, when I choose my team, but those two just instilled so much belief in me. And that's when I think they really, made me feel like I can make this and um because I would doubt myself sometimes and those two definitely and McKay I'm still close with today and he's got me through some really 
tough times both on and off the pitch. So um, I definitely give a shout out to them. But I've had some great coaches and even um, Sharon Black, she was, um, uh, I think, really important for our age, um, like gave instilled a lot of belief in us and then gave some really good key guidance going into it. Yeah, but the list goes on. I've, I've been really lucky with the coaches I've had. Yeah. Pippa wants to know, and I thought this question was really cute, advice for young girls who want to be like you but have boys putting them down saying they can't. Oh. I know. Oh, tell those boys. That... <laughs> <laughs> but, no, I think um, it's so important to just um, it, it, just believe in yourself and don't let anyone, um, like, change your opinion on yourself. I think um, if if you have a dream, you follow it and don't let anyone stand in the way of that. If it's a boy saying it, they can go get stuffed. <laughs> but, yeah. You are living proof of that, Charlie. Really <laughs> um, I had a couple of kids wanting shirt swaps. Is that something you might do at the World Cup perhaps or do you want to keep every single shirt and frame them all in your house? <laughs> <laughs> no, I definitely love uh, to do shirt swaps. I think um, it uh, it's really – I've done a couple in a couple of my games. Actually, my debut, there was another player in Ireland who had a Grant shirt and she asked to swap – that was my first jersey swap and That's she cool. asked that that was pretty special. But it's nice to swap jerseys because then you can um, remember the teams you've played against and some teams have some pretty cool – jerseys but I do like keeping some for family and some friends and stuff as well yeah yeah Christy Hillier a good friend of mine asks <laughs> which Adelaide WMPL team would you sign for if you had to <laughs> oh. oh you know I did have this killing me. that's a interesting too old for NPC. yeah I'm too old for NPC because I did have this dilemma when I was um wasn't sure what I was doing when I first came out of NTC and I had no idea what I was going to do. Yes, and I was trying um, to get Yeah, uh, there's some good teams in there, but I think, you know, but, oh, you know, I do like the sound of Westies. They are a good team, but I think I would probably. Oh, there's the butt you're really, talking about. There's the butt I'm talking about. The butt, I think the I have a lot of friends at LA Juni and, I just think it'd be a bit of fun to, and I always would have joked with them, yeah, I'd come play with you guys. So I'm going to lock in Adelaide Ooh. Junior. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm you're going to get a phone call after this. <laughs> oh, my God, Charlie's coming back. <laughs> she's not. It's not a Westie, she's not. <laughs> um, <laughs> Eric wants to know if you weren't a pro footballer, where you might have ended up in your career. Ooh, or maybe um, after your career as a footballer. Yeah, so if I wasn't a – if I didn't play football, I think I would probably be doing another sport. So I probably would have stuck to netball maybe and I um, might, might have played that. Although now looking back, netball is such a restrictive sport. <laughs> um, um, but then, yeah, so I, I would probably try to have pursued another sport. But post-career, that's a, definitely a hard one to – I still get confused of what I'm going to do, but I did. I have been doing a little bit of study of psychology, so maybe something to do oh. with to do with that. But I love helping people and I love helping kids, so um, definitely something involved with that. Um, but yeah, lovely. We just have two more, um, which I thought mm -hmm. was another great question from Maddie. Um, how do you take care of your mental health? Yeah. Um, yeah, it definitely have moments where it really catches up on you. Um, but I think it's just having that support group. Um, it's so important to talk it out. I think um, when you keep it in, that's when it gets uh, worse. But to find those people where you feel comfortable telling um, what's on your mind. So uh, that's my, in this case, it's my family or I've got some really close friends here that I do um, share those things with. Um but then also finding other things to do outside of soccer so you don't get caught up in that um, in soccer all the time to um, to take your mind off that. So 
um, like I said earlier, just trying to maybe do some, do a bit of reading, do a, um, I've actually bought a basketball because so cool. I thought it'd be fun to just shoot some hoops. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so just finding other things to enjoy and having those people to, um, uh, to share um, what's on your mind. Lovely. And last one is a random one. Caitlin Pickett would like to know what your, who your favourite Harry Potter character is. Oh, my favourite Harry Potter character. Oh, I do love Harry Potter. I was actually just watching a little reel of Harry Potter before. Um, hmm. uh, I mean, let's say Hagrid. Mm. <laughs> Can't go past Hagrid. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, of course, Harry, but and Harry Hermione, too. but I thought sort of, mainstream. Yeah. But I thought sort I'd of go outside, yeah. you know, yeah. Well, we got through all the fan questions. There were so many. You would like, that's actually the short version. So thanks for your patience with that one. <laughs> now we have the dream team and you cannot put the Matildas in. So that's the <laughs> MPL. You said you played in Sydney for a little bit. Yeah. Anyone, I'm assuming mainly Adelaide. But yeah, are, are you ready? Are you ready for that? Okay, I'm ready. Now, I have done some preparation, so I do have a little note here. Um, I'm going to do everyone from Adelaide because we're going to keep Adelaide base. Um, I'm also going to do, it was just getting, it's, I don't know how everyone's done it because it's oh. there's so many players. It's so hard to choose from. I know. Um, but I'm going to do with people I've played with within the WNPL. So we're going to go probably mostly NTC days. Um, yeah. But we'll start with goalkeeper and mm-hmm. Evelyn Goldsmith um, is my goalkeeper. Yep. Um, I love that. Uh, I just think she's when she's in form, she is very good. She, um, no, she's uh, always love her um, at the, in the goals. Um, then I have been looking at the different teams, and I have seen the formation is usually four three three. But I thought we can switch it up. I'm going to spice things up and oh. go with three back. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, and it's we're gonna go with. Yeah, that's the problem. What's that? Too many midfielders. Exactly. There's. Uh, it's no. It's it's been really hard to do this. <laughs> but I'm gonna go with Zoe as the right centre back. Zoe Tolland. Mm-hmm. Um, I think she's been doing really well in Adelaide United, and I think um, I just love the grit she's got about her. Um. Then I'm going to go with Gemma McFarlane as the central centre back. I think she is one of the most underrated centre backs that I've played with. I think she could have gone so far, but um, she, I love her calmness on the ball and she just intercepts every ball there is. Mm-hmm. Um, then I'm going to go Ella Tonkin as that left centre back um, because she's a just another reliable centre back um, and. She's another one that's been doing really well in LA tonight. I love seeing her grow with confidence. She's doing, doing good things. Then we're going to have wing backs, and I'm going to have Emily Hodgson as the right wing back. Um, I think I think she's been in like every um, yeah. <laughs> everyone's dream team. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah. Um, Just... no, she's good. Yeah, well, it's so hard to choose, and then you, I feel I've definitely forgotten players, but I've just that's why I stuck with who I've played with because that's like, otherwise I'm just... a bench I might know yeah be no get a bench I oh, know bench would have been nice but that's okay that's the rules <laughs> <I'll stick to laughs> <that. Stick> um <laughs> yeah but Emily Hodgson um she's yeah, so she's fit great. and reliable as well yeah mm-hmm. she's doing great and then I'm gonna put myself as left wing back because oh. I want to play with my friends and that'd be fun I know I don't know if that was uh, breaking the rules, but I thought this Second would be a fun team to play done. With. Chantel Ryder did yeah, that, okay. and I okay, rated I'm it. Glad <laughs> okay. Who doesn't want to play? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to put Georgia Yinella as my six because I love Jitch, um, and she's just go work so hard, and, and especially as a fullback, like. She'd always be so close to you and, like, I love my sixes when they get close and you just whack the ball at them and they still control it and get out. Um, and then Lara Kirkby because, well, she's one of my best friends as well. <laughs> so we love playing together. 
Um, oh, wait. And sorry, then... she had a question and it was oh, something did I didn't understand. Yeah, sorry. Um, how did your rhythm get so good? <laughs> yeah, so everyone knows me for having, like, rhythm dyslexia um, because I'm always offbeat. But I've been practising a lot. I do a lot of TikToks with my friends and trying yeah, to yeah. get better at my rhythm. So yeah. I don't know if she's paying me out and saying that I'm still not good at my rhythm or she's being serious. <laughs> Probably paying you out, I'm going to guess. <laughs> yeah, I think paying me out. forgot about that. Um, yeah, I'll check Lara in the midfield with, um, I don't know how my midfield would work, but we'll have three in the midfield. We'll go Jitch, Lara, and then Chelsea Dorber. You know, Dorbs. Um, she's. I feel like she's like a queen of WMPL. Um, yeah. You can't go wrong without her. Um, and then my front two, bit of fun. Um, we're going to have Caitlin White uh, as a night. <laughs> yeah. Um, she hasn't had many WMPL games. She's been very unfortunate with knee injuries. But, yeah, she um, has. I, I actually think she, there's not many girls I've played with that are one of those natural nines where they hold up the ball. So I think she'd be good, especially playing alongside Mallory Mullen, who would just run oh. all day in behind. Um, no. And yeah, exactly. So that's my that's my dream team. And I probably missed someone, but I think that's a really fun team, and um, I like that. Yeah. Oh, I needed coaches as well. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So I would have. Michael, Matriciani and McCare, um, Michaela, that's Stella. Because you can't have one without the other. They'll just I thought when I had them in MPO and NTC, they just really complemented each other really nicely. Like um Michael was really good at giving all the tactics and stuff and McCare just um so good for looking after our players' well being, which I think is probably one of the most important things about playing at a high level is um having uh looking after players well being and he definitely does that and still does today. Um but uh yeah they were two probably one of my two favourite coaches I've had. Love that. Well yeah. not sure what formation that is but I'm sure I'll work it out. <laughs> yeah, I'll send a photo of how I've done that. Um but it's a bit random. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Good luck to Mike and McCare playing that. <laughs> wow, thanks Charlie. You'll be out there too. You'll be running around. People say like, oh, I wish we could get that team together. Like imagine if somehow <laughs> we could have like a tor- tournament of all the people. Like, that would be fun. Team, see who wins. Yeah. There's a few like Emily who would have to play in every team. Okay. I know. She might be a bit tired by the end of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Well, that wraps things up. Um, thank you so much for your time. No, you're a busy gal cycling around <laughs> and playing with um, Harper. <laughs> no worries at all. Thanks for having me on. It was fun. Yeah, no problem. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. We will see you later. Um, yeah, catch ya. <laughs> see ya.